Okay, so good morning. Hope you're all really well. Um, I'm Katie from Voodoo Chili Design in Hereford um, and I'm here with my colleagues Harry and Thomas who you'll be able to see and they'll give you a wave now. Oh, Hello, that's Harry. Hiya. Hello. <laughs> that's Harry. <laughs> Thomas. So Thomas is our designer and Harry is the founder of Voodoo Chili and we've been going for over 20 years. Um, and yeah, it was founded by Harry. We're actually Hereford's longest established digital agency. Um, and although we're quite well known in our local area, we have got a growing client basis in London as well. Um, I don't know where all you guys are from, but I'm sure there's lots of different businesses and different industries as well. Um, but we do work alongside lots of different uh, companies. So SMEs and different organizations, um, quite a broad range actually. Um, and we do do uh, deal with quite a lot of different ranges of uh, SEO clients as well. Um, today's session is going to be covering the basics of SEO. Um, so we won't be going into um, advanced um, knowledge, but we will just be covering kind of the fundamentals and talking about how you might be able to improve your business because at the moment it's a bit strange. We're all working from home um, perhaps sometimes in your bit you, you haven't been able to you haven't had to use your website as much as you have in the last cu couple of weeks um, but yeah we wanted to explain how we could maybe help improve your presence online and hopefully turn some of those um, some of the traffic into sales as well so I'm marketing executive Harry um, do you want to just briefly introduce yourself <laughs> yeah um, yeah I uh, founded Buddha Chili back in the early 2000s um, I started out as a, uh, a web developer and designer um, but now I've got a team of people that are far better than I was um, and yeah just uh, run the business and help with SEO and sales and, and all those kind of things so. great thanks Harry and what about you Thomas what do you do Oh God, I wasn't prepared for this. Hello, uh, I'm Thomas, <laughs> uh, web designer here. Some of you might have worked with me in the past. Hopefully some of you work with me in the future. Um, yeah, I make websites look pretty, or at least I try to. <laughs> uh, yeah, as well. Uh, some, of our, um, some of our other colleagues aren't on the call today, but we have got uh, web developers as well. So uh, that build the website and do all the, the coding, which I, it seems bizarre to me but, uh, but yeah so it's normal for those guys um, so also we're lucky enough to be joined by the FSB today so Federation of Small Businesses we've got Michael and Richard on the call uh, if you give us a wave <laughs> I can't un give me a sec Oh, they're just going to unmute them. Uh, so we were actually lucky enough to attend the awards um, at the beginning of March which seems like an absolute lifetime away now um it, it does seem about a year ago i think you probably agree uh, but we were lucky enough to win an award for uh, well-being in the workplace and also get highly commended in uh, the digital e and e-commerce uh, section as well uh, it was an amazing day we um yeah Harry and I went along and we thoroughly enjoyed it. We met Hannah, uh, Hannah who's attending today as well. Uh, but first of all, I just wanted to hand over quickly to Richard and Michael and just explain a little bit about what you do and what your positions are at the FSB. Uh, Michael, if you want to go first. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, so, uh, Mike Goodall, um, I'm uh, employed by FSB, so I'm a member of staff and I cover the Herefordshire uh, Shropshire and uh, Worcestershire areas. Uh, my job, I suppose, in a nutshell, is to work with um, local stakeholders in business, government, media, uh, at a local, regional and national level to uh, promote the cause of uh, small businesses uh, and to work with our members like Voodoo Chili uh, and others to, uh, to support them uh, and to, uh, to promote the various campaigns and policies um, that FSB pursues at a national level. Um, and then final thing I would say really is just in terms of the current crisis, uh, Federation of Small Business, Businesses has been extremely successful in terms of securing um, a large number of the packages of support that are now available. We know they're not perfect and they're not uh, covering everybody at the moment, uh, but we continue to work on that. But rest assured that were it not for Federation of Small Businesses, we wouldn't have the level of uh, support 
uh, flowing through from government uh, that we do at the moment uh, and we're continuing to, to, to work on that to see it improved. So that's enough from me for now. Great. I just noticed, sorry, that Ray, you're here as well from the FSB. I'm sorry. I, so Thomas, if you can unmute Ray as well. Sorry, Ray. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> so Richard and Ray, if you can just explain a little bit. Yeah, about I, ha I had missed Ray. I was going to introduce him as well. So I'd like to then sort of speak about himself for a moment. Um, but yes, Ray's our, our membership advisor, so I'll let him speak about that. I'm what's called a national council. I've been a member for 13 years. Um, we have a board of directors made up of members, and then a national council on them who handle scrutiny and sort of member matters up to up to directors as well. Uh, so I represent the West Midlands. We have 12 national councillors. Um, it's you know it's it's fantastic being involved in it. But most of all, I'm really proud of the lobbying that goes on. And as Mike said, it doesn't always come out perfectly because we can only do the lobbying and suggestions and pushing things forward. At the end of the day, it's politicians' decisions. Um, I've also been helping on the FSB COVID support group. We're on Facebook, which has over 4,000 businesses involved on that, um, asking questions. Don't have to be members to be involved in it. Um, and it's peer-to-peer. -peer, so uh, there's no staff that like you know, butting in or anything. <laughs> Not that staff butt in like. Um, it's the FSB is a member-led organisation. We're not run by staff. However, the staff really do a great job of helping us and managing sort of like the the whole business, so to speak, because otherwise you end up with sort of like you know sort of 50, uh, 150,000 opinions flying about. So through the directors, they set the strategy, then the staff deliver that for us. So that just gives a quick overview of what how the FSB works. Um, you know, I'll hand over to Ray to say what he does, which he is a real expert on how the benefits work for members. Thanks Richard and good morning Katie. Hi. I, I'm the membership advisor covering Shropshire and Herefordshire for the Federation. I meet with people by face to face in normal times, by telephone or by video, to explain the many benefits of FSB membership. A lot of people join and then within a few months of joining they've forgotten about things and they're paying extra for things that they could get free through FSB. So I'm there to help and remind people. The one thing I would say, for most members, if you cannot save considerably more than the cost of membership, you're not using your membership correctly and you need to contact me and I can talk you through how you can make membership cost negative. FSB, right. look for more members, purely and simply because the more members we have, the louder the voice we have with government and the more notice government will take of us. The beauty for members, as I say, is you get a range of protection benefits and you get cost savings, which means membership is cost negative for you. Great. OK. Um, and I believe the FSB will be able to answer any questions that you have at the end of the session. Um, perhaps you're struggling in this in this time, like, well, we all are probably struggling to some um, extent, but they are here to advise um, at the end if you have any questions. And if we do run out of time, I believe Michael um, will be able to share his email and you'll be able to ask him any questions directly. Um, we've also got Hannah with us. So it's we're really, really excited to have Hannah along. Um, as I mentioned, we met her at the FSB. FSB Awards. She was, um, you'll have to probably say what you won the award for. I think it was Young Entrepreneur of the Year. It was. Yeah. Great, yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, her business is really, really amazing. We were so inspired by her work um, and we thought that this would be a great way to illustrate um, the session and also make use of the resource after. So you'll be able to, if, if all of this goes in through one ear and out through the other, at least you'll be able to use Hannah's amazing illustration after and do a bit of revision on what we've talked about. Um, so Hannah's just gonna briefly introduce herself. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Katie. So I'm Hannah Williams. I'm actually based in Shropshire. So I know most people are in Herefordshire, so rival of the counties there. Yeah, um, <laughs> who let her in? <laughs> I'm, I'm an honorary member, I'll be honorary Herefordshire. <laughs> um, so I'm an illustrator by trade and um, I help communicate complicated ideas and messages through visuals. Um, so that could be in, like, as Ray said, normal times, that would be at events live, so I'd do huge drawings whilst the event happens. But in these times, I actually do it digitally. So through the webinar, I still do exactly the same thing, document in real time, but you'll get to see it as a digital version. 
Great. That's okay. It. So um, Thomas is going to focus on Hannah's screen. Um, so throughout what I'm talking about, um, you're going to have something nice to look at <laughs> and not a huge version of my face. So um, Hannah's going to be scribbling along with this. Uh, so I'll just wait for that to go over to Hannah's screen. Yep, I will share Thanks. now. Great. Okay. Can everyone see mm -hmm. that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, so I will, you won't see my face now because my screen should do this. <laughs> okay. There we go. So we're all set up. Looks good, Hannah. Okay. Um, so first of all, what is SEO? Uh, some of you may know already. Um, basics but uh, we're going to try and break the bits down um, bit by bit. It does sound quite daunting to start with but SEO is search engine optimization and basically what it means is trying to get your page ranked higher on Google. Uh, you could have a really beautiful site all singing or dancing but if your customers aren't able to see it um, then you're not going to be generating sales and for a business that is obviously the most crucial part. Um, so we're going to try and advise, usually in our workshops we do some exercises to try and uh, help you a little bit more but we will be putting our workshops back on um, after this whole period but we wanted to share as much as we could with you today and obviously Hannah's scribbling will hopefully help retain some of that information as well. Um, so it sounds to search engine optimization and throughout the session I'm going to just um, go through the main points what contribute to SEO um, and Harry who's had over 20 years experience in the industry he's going to be talking uh, in a little bit more depth and I'm just going to hand over to him at some points. Uh, so it doesn't matter what type of business uh, you have we're gonna all of these um, things apply to every single online um, website. So first of all um, how does Google discover your web page? Um, there's actually some main um, points that they do and they do process, um, three main processes actually. And we're going to talk about Google quite a lot today. Um, the main reason for that is Google accounts for 90% of search traffic, uh, certainly in the UK. Um, if you're in different countries, uh, it might be applicable for other search engines, but Google is, accounts for 90% of the traffic in the UK. Um, so it gets information from uh, web pages, which is what we're going to talk about today, uh, but also user submitted content from Google My Business, um, maps. Um, if that's something you haven't done and you haven't submitted your um, map to Google, then that's something you can ask about after. Um, but that's really worthwhile getting that on the map for SEO. Um, book scanning, public databases on the internet and many other sources. Um, but the three basic steps that Google takes to um, when it's looking at your page. So pages are separate. So your home page will be different to your blog. So it might be the case that your home page has been indexed by Google, but not necessarily your blog or a service that you provide. So it goes through different stages. So they use bots um, and they crawl the, the web constantly. Google is constantly uh, crawling the web and listing new pages and as you can imagine that equates for a huge directory. Uh, if you can only imagine what we know of in websites there is just thousands and thousands and well millions out there. Um, so it goes through this that uses a bot that crawls through the, uh, the web to seeing uh, any new pages that are added or um, changes to any pages and then it goes through the process of indexing those pages. So how does it do that? It goes to the page and basically, like a person, it would try and make sense of that page. Google's very, very clever, uh, especially now. Technology is just mind blowing. Um, but it will look at the content on a page. It will also look at uh, video files, images. Um, one really important part, um, so it's really important, content is the most important part on your page. Um, images are great, but uh, for SEO, they don't, Google can read text better, um, simply. So it's, it's quite worthwhile to think about um, if, you don't, if you are including images, to do an alt description. Um, so for example, if you've uploaded an image of, uh, I don't know, a, a plant, so it's, you just put person by plant, um, it will help Google understand what that page is about in more depth. Um, so it will go through that process and then it will look to rank your page. So 
this huge directory, what are they going to do? Uh, how are they going to rank, uh, rank the pages? So uh, it will consider lots of different things, which I will touch upon in a bit more depth. Um, but when you type into Google your query, um, it will go, it will take into consideration lots of different consideration, lots of different factors. So is it, it's looking at your device. So if you're on a mobile device, uh, Google will try and find the best websites that work on a web, uh, on a, a mobile for you. Um, these days we know ourselves that we look at um, many different things on our phone. So it's more and more important that your website does work. So you, for instance, you could be looking on a, a mobile device at a website and it, you can't see all the information um, that you would be able to on a desktop. So it's definitely worth considering. Uh, location, so for example, if I'm in London and I've typed in hairdressers, it's Google's most likely to um, bring up local results. So London hairdressers, if I'm in London, probably don't want a Hereford hairdresser. However, if I typed in London hairdressers when I'm in Hereford, that will come up with London hairdressers. Um, and it also um, takes into account the quality of the content. When they're, you know, they've got so many pages in a line and they want to find the very best results and they do pride themselves on offering the very best results for their users and that's how they're so successful. Um, Google does not accept payments to get a higher rank. Um, it's, I just want to touch upon the fact that we're looking at organic results when we're talking about SEO. So uh, when you look on Google, you will often see pages listed with a, an ad sign at the beginning. That means that that's a paid ad. Um, and that's different, completely different. But uh, SEO is organic, natural, free results. Um, and yeah, so just want to be clear on that. So getting started on keyword content. So what does keyword means? Uh, if you were a client looking for your business or your service, what would you type into Google? Uh, if you're looking for Voodoo Chili, you might type in Web Design Hereford and we should come up as number one. <laughs> and, um, or you might type in Digital Strategy. Uh, or if you're looking for the FSB, you might type in uh, companies that help with small businesses and you should be able to find them. Uh, so that is a keyword search term. Um, and those are the things, that, your keywords, you need, uh, they're, they're crucial to when you are writing content on your site and actually just figure out, figure out any new, new things on your site. Uh, so easy ways to improve your content and boost your web score are uh, um, instead of write human uh, human focused content so don't write in you know uh, it doesn't need to be really really technical you need to speak so your user and google understands uh, what you're trying to portray and actually that's more engaging for the user and you're more likely to gain more traffic from that um, include industry specific terminology without making it hard to understand uh, so if you specialize in something specific, then that's really uh, useful to mention that in your keyword list. Um, target specific keywords and write numerous pieces of content around this topic. Uh, this can be done really easily in a blog. So we're gonna talk about actually trying to get a blog. If, if you don't already have a blog, it's really worthwhile doing it. And if you don't feel like that, that the term blog really suits your business, you could use news or journal um, if, you, if that fits your audience better. Um, so blogs are really, really good ways of getting keyword rich content out there to your viewers. Um, it's sometimes hard to put that in web, certain web pages without it seeming masses of information. But for example, uh, you might think that something is really interesting, an interesting topic. Uh, so at the moment, lots of blogs are focused around uh, the the causes to businesses of um, after COVID-19. Um, and so you'd write blogs on that and how it's affecting different businesses, how you can help. Uh, one really good thing you can do is write about, uh, offer free, free informative advice for your visitors. So you have a wealth of knowledge about your service or, you know, your business. So offer free advice to your users. Google sees that as brilliant, uh, but also for your users, it's really helpful and it can help your users find you. Uh, so if your ideal client is looking for, uh, you know, a piece of advice, uh, then they're going to type in that and you should hopefully come up as their search result. And don't try to hard sell. Um, so that's really important. Like I said, offer free information. Um, 
you know, you might think it sounds boring, but the information that you know is, is something that somebody else doesn't know about. So don't ever think that you're giving your uh, clients too much information or anything like that. A blog is a good place to kind of just get out all that information that you have stored. <laughs> um, and yeah, articles uh, about your business, people, people want to buy from people as as we well know and um, so introduce the people that you work with um, what they specialize in people want to know that they can trust you um, and that you're skilled if you've got any qualifications to do with your business definitely list those and um, that's really important uh, Harry have you got anything to touch upon with that yeah um, just that often when we speak to our clients um, they they sometimes struggle finding things to write about themselves and they think you know, what, what, what can we write? We haven't got anything useful or interesting to write about, but nearly every client um, that we've worked with has things going on um, in their business that, you know, that may, be, it may seem trivial to them, um, but it will help um, build up that content. So, you know, if you've won an award or you've taken on new staff or you've developed a, a new product or service or anything like that, um, just write about it. And the investment of of time there you know we're talking a couple of hours a month um it pays back so much um what you know you need to do it over you know six months really to, to gain traction on it um but that small amount of time um just pays back so much it's it's ridiculous um and you know most businesses do have things going on that are interesting yeah. um and if you can write about things very specific to what you do so um industry specific terminology um, without making it, you know, boring and, and overly technical, those keywords are, are then going to get indexed by Google and um, are likely to rank you higher for them. So, um, yeah, it's just just spend a bit of time identifying um, what you can write about. Really, and it's, it's not actually that difficult. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Thank you, Harry. Okay. Um, on and off page SEO. Um, so on page SEO, it refers to any actions taken on your page. So that's the content, the structure of the content, uh, the HTML code, um, and so on. Uh, and then you've got off page SEO. So that looks at how authoritative and popular your site is. Backlink. So I don't know if anybody of you are familiar with backlinks or the term at all, but backlinks is also known as inbound links, incoming links, or one-way links. And uh, they are links from any one website to another. Uh, backlinks are especially valuable for SEO because they represent a vote of confidence. Uh, so go Google sees that as a way of saying that, yes, these guys know what they're talking about. Uh, we're going to link to this page. We think this page is good. We really enjoy what they're writing about. We vouch for them. Um, and they help search engines gauge the authority, basically. In essence, backlinks to your website are a signal to search engines that other vouch for your content, which I just said, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, and that builds up this, uh, this profile, which is called a uh, domain authority. Harry is going to explain in a bit more depth after this, um, but domain authority or ranking uh, is a reflection of a website's total backlink profile, and any data domain rating over 30 is considered a uh, quite authoritative site. Um, although a site's authority is not based solely on d domain rating, it's one of the most important factors to consider. Uh, so when a site is relatively new, this can uh, mean that the site can have quite a low domain, domain authority um, and there can be other contributing factors. But for instance, if um, somebody gets, a, if we got a link back from the BBC, uh, the BBC is very well known, um, very well established. Um, and they're likely to have quite a high domain rating. Uh, so that ha helps to pass on that domain authority to us. Um, and the more of those links you get, the better. So one way we do, uh, you can do that is offering free guest posts on other people's sites. Um, but Harry, I'm gonna let you explain yep. a little bit more about backlinks and domain authority. Yeah, okay. Well, the important thing about backlinks is um, to focus on you know, the relevance you, you want links from sites that are completely um, different to what you do. Um, Google builds up a, a profile of keywords and it will um, use what are called anchor links and, and content from, from the sites linking in to your site. Um, so try to devise a strategy to, to get more links coming in from other um, websites, especially those of a, 
hire domain authority if you can, um, but always focus on, on those sites that are relevant and somehow relate to you. Um, and often we work with clients to, to devise a strategy to do that, a way of getting links to, to come in um, that are um, similar, but non-competing. Obviously, you know, your, your direct competitor isn't going to link to you. Um, and that can be um, creating engaging content. So um, people naturally want to link to you, or it could be, um, you know, various types of content really. But the, the plan is get people linking to you. And ideally, you don't want um, you don't want to be linking out as much as you're linking in. Um, back in the day when I started out in the, in the early 2000s, um, it was quite common practice to have like a links page, and you'd link to everyone you, you knew, and they'd link back. But that doesn't really work. Google um, measures the the it quantifies the number of incoming links and the value of them, and you kind of you lose a bit of that value if you're just linking out really. So. But don't swap links just try to try to find a way of getting links coming in and that helped massively but it certainly doesn't guarantee a high rank but it's one of the factors yeah and um also harry you, i believe you cannot buy backlinks that's um well you you can you but, can, you're, not meant, but... you're not meant to and, and google will um penalize you google google has the power to just like completely downrank you or or de-index you completely and it does happen um, people will try certain practices such as buying backlinks um, and it, it does go on and there's a market out there for it but it's it's not the best way to um, to rank highly and, and if you get found out that's it Google sh shuts you down on, on the index and um, which is obviously not good for business so. no not worth it at all so don't recommend no. it oh yeah sorry Lucas sorry. Um, uh, when you said aim for over 30 before Katie I don't know yes. if this is for you or Harry actually did you mean 30 backlinks? Is that No, it's, um, there's a, I mean, the, there are various metrics to measure. Years ago, we used to call it um, Google page rank, um, yeah. like PR. Um, now, Google is sort of, is, is a bit more mysterious on how it ranks things because people like myself uh, tried to, to gain the system and, and, you know, rank our clients higher than the, their competitors. Um, now, you, you, you tend to use third-party uh, tools. There's a site called um, Ahrefs, um, and they they do like um, a, a domain authority lookup. So you can type your domain in, in there, and it'll tell you, you know, what your score is. If it's a brand new site, it'll be really low. Um, if it's a site like the BBC, it's going to be like eighty, ninety, or something like that. Just the initials Ahrefs. Yes, yeah, A Ahrefs. I will send that in an email Co. to you all after yeah, as well. Co. But UK. yeah, <laughs> I'll send you a few. link. There's another Moz do it. Um, there's, there are a few out there, but basically people have um, they've tried to calculate what Google thinks, and it it's not set in stone. But you can, you know, when we we're, we're looking at um, potential link partners and, and things like that, we will often type their um, URL into a, um, some sort of domain authority checker to see where it is. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if somebody's linking in, like um, the FSB will have like really high rating um, because lots of people link to them. You know, yeah. if they were to link um, to us, maybe they will after this. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, that the Google is going, going to measure that and go, wow, that's got a really high domain authority or whatever metric Google actually uses. And it will make its decision on the, on the reciprocal um, pages rank based on that authority. So it's a, it's a number. We don't actually know what it is. Um, because Google doesn't publish it, but there are tools to kind of estimate it. So, yeah. I think one one um, quite good way actually to think about it is maybe if you've provided a service for a company, um, then it might be that they they'd like to recommend your service, or it could be a case study, and they could link back to your site. Do you think, Harry? Mm. It's quite yeah. a good way. Obviously, non-competing sites, as Harry said, if you're if if it's a competitor, then mm. they're probably not likely to link to your site. But um, yeah, so that might be a good way to... There's never been a copywriter who's, uh, who's commissioned me to do any work. <laughs> never been a copywriter, so, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to move on to competitor analysis. So who you think of in your mind as your competitors might not necessarily be the case uh, in terms of keywords and your presence online. Um, so if you were to type in a search term, which, uh, say for instance, uh, I don't know, with, uh, a legal company, it could be, uh, I don't know, sorry, a, a legal service, <laughs> um, 
and it might not necessarily be the competitors that come up against you that you thought they would now in some cases it could be a huge huge organization so it's really hard to compete with but it might bring up a few new competitors that you might want to keep your eye on and just compare your website to um, and you can do competitor analysis in many different ways you can look at their links what kind of content they're providing so are they working really hard on their blog um, uh, are they you know what type of things are they producing? Are they have they got a video on their homepage? Um, that's something that we found with our clients to be um, a real success um, to have a video on their homepage. Um, we found that tra by tracking that, it seems that people are staying on their homepage longer and actually interact with it more. Um, so it's just looking at different ways that your competitors, what they might be doing different, and what they've trialed and works really well. Um, there is also another platform that I'll talk about um, shortly which you can use to um, perform competitor analysis uh, which is called SERP robot but again I will send that in an email after um, so in guess of uh, instead of guessing which keywords to target content to create or links to build you can look at what others are doing um, and build upon that success you can also with the AH refs that Harry mentioned uh, just not so long ago you can actually check your um, competitor sites to see what companies and what sites are linking back to them um, and in what way they're doing that so that's quite a good way of seeing where you can start um, so just doing a little bit of research really on your yeah, competitors some, sometimes you will discover things about your competitors like for example um, they might be um, featured on certain directories and, and trade sites that, that you probably don't even know about that, that help push their rank up. So it's yeah. re really important, I think, to, to do back, back link checking of your competitors. Yeah, definitely. Um, it might be something that you're not even aware of and say, for example, a directory could be out there for your business but, and it might be free or it might be very cheap, but it might bring back a lot of return on investment. Um, so getting to know SEO, so what are the things, well, the main factors that contribute to SEO? I talked about earlier, mobile friendly. Uh, so five to 10 years ago, we, we probably wouldn't have taken this question uh, quite so seriously. But uh, in this fast paced world, the percentage of people spending a large amount of time on their mobile device is, has increased significantly. And we probably can all say that we use our mobile phones a lot more, especially in, in the last couple of years. Uh, the likelihood of your site being viewed on a mobile is high. Um, and Google does look at that quite, you know, for SEO, it's a big factor. Uh, you could have a huge page and the content could be spilling off the ends and you can't read it all. And people will probably just give up. People haven't got as much time to search pages now. Um, they want everything to look perfect straight away. Um, so it's worth having a look at all of your pages to see how they look on a mobile, whether they whether all the links work properly, um, whether they can the most important thing is they can still inquire with you very easily on a mo mobile device um, as they would be on a desktop. Um, secondly, so page speed, you've taken all this time to try and get a customer to your website don't fail at the last hurdle so look at page speed how long is your website taken to load it might be things like the image is too large um, some kind of links aren't working or um, it um, might be something to do with the code which Harry can touch upon but um, really really important that um, your page speed is is good because people don't wait now they do want everything instantly as I said so Harry what what can you yeah there are lots of things I mean you can you can run um, your site through a page speed checker um, but generally um, a lot of slow speed can be fixed by making sure you've got a good web host so if your site is slow generally um, maybe have a look at your web host and consider um, upgrading it or moving to someone else um, there's also a tool you can use called Cloudflare, which is um, a content delivery network. And basically, um, that will speed up your website considerably by, by kind of caching um, the content. Um, one, of the, one of the quickest ways of um, reducing um, the delay to download a page is, is to look at the images. A lot of images on a lot of sites are just badly compressed. They're massive. Um, and this is the sort of thing we, we help our clients with. We'll, we'll go for each page, optimize it, make it um, as, as small as it can be without losing quality. Um, yeah, but that's... You, Ooh, you, sorry, you normally, you, you, will, um, you will kind of know if your site is slow. And um, yeah, a lot of that can be fixed by looking at your hosting, actually. Yeah. Um, 
and we kind of contradicting ourselves on the next one because I'm saying about the quality of images. So even though you want them, it might be that you've got some large images that are slowing your site up, you still want quality images, um, especially if your e-commerce site, um, it can seem deceiving. If we've all experienced, if you've ordered something online, it comes and it looks completely different. Um, that's not gonna get returning customers, um, but low quality image, images just we all know from going on a, a site you kind of don't uh you're not as likely to buy into their product um if the images aren't clear um they're really pixelated especially now as we're it, it's so accessible to get good quality images especially on an iphone or um android device um so just look at the images on your site and see if they they are high quality um off-site link building, which we've talked about before, um, about backlinks. And the next one is a secure site. So Harry's gonna go into a little bit more detail on that. So Harry, first question I just wanna ask is, how can somebody tell if their site is secure? And then, and what, is, what does that mean for SEO? Okay, yeah, um, you, could, you, you can normally tell if your site is secure or the site that you're on is secure by just by looking at the top where the web address is. You, you, you typically have like a, a green or gray padlock there. Um, and if it's not secure, it will um, it will be in red or will be a cross or something like that. And it does it does definitely put people off. Um, but also, it um, Google will penalise you and downrank your your site if if it's not secure. Um, most people have a have a secure site now, um, but it's easy to check. It's very easy to fix. Um, you know, you can often get them a security certificate for free or for you know ten pounds a year. Um, and it, it makes a massive difference, not just to um, SEO, but also confidence. If you're, if you're selling anything, you absolutely need it. Um, I would say even a brochure site needs to be secure, um, and it's kind of expected these days. Great. Thank you, Harry. Um, also, internal links. So trying to help your users and um, and Google find their way around your page is really important. So um, first of all, you want people to stay on your site and um, the more you link to other pages, the easier it is for Google to index, um, but also people to stay on your page and say, for instance, you've done a blog on some, one of your services and you've linked back to a page that actually talks more about this and how they can inquire. Um, so it's really important to internal link on your page. It does mean that visitors do stay longer have you got anything to add on that harry um not really um not internal yeah. links just um just on the external links um sites link I'm, go I'm going back a little bit here but when you um sites that are linking to you externally um it's quite important the the content that is um is there it's, it's called um anchor links and anchor content um you need that content to relate to your product or service really um, I'm laboring the point a little bit, but it, it has a, a big impact on SEO. So just make sure that any content linking into your site um, relates to what you do, if you can. So. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Thank you. Uh, user experience. So imagine you're going into a theme park. Everything is carefully thought out. Uh, everything you see, everything you can uh, touch. Uh, everything is thought about for your experience to maximize your experience. So imagine your website is like that. So you step in and if you've got a shop, you want that same experience on your website as that you've got in your shop or in the theme park. Um, so it might be where buttons are. If you really want someone to buy from you, uh, when you go into the theme park, it might be merchandise that they want you to buy. So they, it's where you place that. So if it's at the top of your screen, um, it might mean that that's more successful, but there is ways of split testing. That's probably a bit more complicated to go into, uh, but trialing out where those buttons are put and what color that button is, is are more people interacting with that. There are tools to see, which I will uh, share with you a little bit later on, uh, which can do video recording. Uh, see what user what uh, basically learn about your user and where they're going so you might think that your user uh, well ideally is going from your home page straight to the where you inquire but actually it might be a lot different and that's something you can assess and work upon and see how you can help that user journey um, and it's all it can be minor minor tweaks which can make a huge huge difference to uh, the customer actually inquiring they can spend time on your page 
and it could mean that they're wasting time on the wrong pages just because of how it's laid out or the structure. Um, so you want it to be informative, but you want it to be aesthetically pleasing uh, and easy navigation. So if you're trying to buy a product and you cannot see the add to basket um, sign, you're likely to kind of think, oh, well, you know, I don't really need that. Don't give your user too much time to think about the process. Try and get that uh, as quick as possible. Uh, and also individual con content. So it's important not to duplicate your content. If you think, oh, this is really important, I'll put this on this paragraph on each page. It's not necessarily a good thing to do for SEO because Google sees it as, you know, it, it is duplicated content and they can see that. They think, you know, that maybe they haven't got that much to share. Um, it's yeah I'd say avoid duplicating content as much as you can um, a user as well might think you know they might get bored or spend less time on that on that as well um, it can also you can also get um, penalized for plagiarism if you are to copy anyone's content so uh, please don't do that make sure your content is original I'm writing stuff for a, a company at the minute and a lot of the, a lot of uh, there is quite a lot of repetition right so it Certainly, if there's a duplication of the copy. So mm -hmm. if you were talking about a particular product, there yeah. are some things that are um, similar to a, a, a similar product in that range, for example. Does that matter? Or Harry, I'm going to let you answer that one. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat that? It's sort of unavoidable because if you're talking about um, if you're talking about particular features of mm. a particular within a range then um, some of the copy copies recycled because another another product in that range will have very similar features yeah um, um, I think in, in terms of being penalized by um, Google um, you you're not going to get in trouble if the content is similar but not identical um, it's more it is more to um, stop plagiarism so a lot of we see it all the time um a lot of people will just literally copy and paste from another source and google has this content in the index already so it knows right that was their first this one's second and then it will it will downrank it if you've got if you're writing content for a client and you know they've got um industry specific terminology and it all seems a bit similar because it has to be um i wouldn't worry about that in terms of from a seo point of view Okay. So sorry yeah. if I've confused that one. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's just it was just. Um, I, I think I know. I think I can see um, a slight difference. There, there, there isn't really, uh, unless you just didn't have the copy there for that for for mm -hmm. uh, different products. But, uh, I don't. I don't think the company would go along with that. To be perfectly honest, unless mm -hmm. unless you were saying they're definitely going to get penalised. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. So I think it's just being aware of not. Yeah basically trying to if you can kind of alter the content slightly but yeah you won't get penalized if it's for example it you can't change the content it's yeah in some instances that is the case um i think it's just important not to have the same piece of content on every single page i think that's trying something to avoid if you can yeah, um yeah. and have varied content really mm. um but yeah, also lastly, uh, sitemaps. So Harry, again, if you could explain about sitemaps. Yeah, um, a sitemap is just basically um, a list of URLs, uh, links for Google to, to crawl. So you just, you're spoon feeding Google where, where all of your, your content is. Um, most sites don't actually need a sitemap um, and it's, it, um, you know, it's not essential. If you've got a 10 page brochure site, Google's going, going to be fine. Um, crawling that but we've got clients like we've got one client that has uh, 50,000 products um, and for that reason we, ha we have to make sure they've got an up-to-date sitemap um, just so Google knows right this page is here it was last updated two days ago um, so the content has changed so please have another look at it yeah. um, so I would only worry about sitemap really if you know if you've got quite a lot of content Great, okay. Um, so the things you might look for when establishing, uh, establishing whether a site is legis legitimate, uh, trustworthy, and makes you engage in choir. So have a think about how you respond to websites, um, and it might help you actually quite a lot with your business. Um, so people want social proof 
evidence that this product or service is good. Uh, so what do we look for? We look for reviews. If we go on Amazon, for example, um, we're most likely to compare some reviews. Um, people want to know that other people have purchased. Uh, there's a proof of the purchasing. There's a proof that the service is good. Uh, so testimonials are really, really important. Um, so if you can, always have that in the back of your mind when you're uh, working working with clients, um, think about if you can try and get a testimonial. Um, people don't mind, um, but it's just definitely worth asking. If you ask 10 people, you're more than likely to get one, one person say yes. Uh, knowledge, so you want to know that the people that you're buying from are the best in the industry at what they do. Um, and you need to see that they're knowledgeable on the subject. Um, there is quite a lot of in-depth, not, not boring, but in-depth knowledge on that. Uh, is the site attractive? Um, it's not the main thing that you'd probably consider, but more and more um, sites are getting more visually pleasing and naturally you probably want to spend more time on the ones that you're attracted to. Uh, how does it function? Is it user friendly? So we talked about earlier trying to find an, uh, the basket item or is, it, um, is your customers easily finding the inquire button? Um, and are they getting bounced off something? Um, so yeah, does it function well? Is it user friendly? Is the content relevant? Um, so you might have a you might have landed on a page uh, with a title saying about I don't know a new product, um, and then you read into it and you think this is nothing to do with what I've I've inquired about, and that is um, that's just making sure that everything you're writing about is relevant to what what you are providing and being honest um, just be really honest about your services and um, if you're honest and I'm sure you'll talk in more depth about that and that'll be good for keywords as well um, evidence of the people you're buying from so uh, it's really good to have a meet the team page um, people want to know who they're dealing with um, I think I've said it before but people buy off people and um, they want to know you know you may some of you may have gone onto our page and you'd be able to find out a, bit, a little bit about us what we do um and yeah who you'll be dealing with really uh, so quite good to have a meet the team page it's really good for uh specialist terms on keywords as well uh does the page appear on the first page of google so seo even though it's it's very hard to get ranked in on the first page and um, that is what seo that's what we're aiming to do because personally i know that i haven't probably gone past the, the second page on google in a long time um so our aim is to be on that first page um and we've we've got quite a lot of our clients on that first page now which is good um so there is i've just spoke about keywords but long tail keywords so long key, uh, long tail keywords are niche and specific so for example if i was to type in books to google um that you know i might be looking for any type of book i might be looking on a, a book on a certain time of history a world world uh, you know it could be a scientific book um so if i've typed in book i i'm most likely just doing my research and seeing what companies provide books what's cheapest but if i was to type in for example hg wells this the time machine then the the search results are far fewer but you're i'm i'm looking for what you know people sites are going to come up what i'm looking for if i was to type in hg wells the time machine first edition then you're going to slim those search results out even more and you're more likely to appear in the search so for example if i'm looking for sunglasses when i first do my research i might just type in who does sunglasses sunglasses but if i was to type in aviator sunglasses with gold frames i'm far more likely to be able i'm, I'm probably more likely to think right when i find them i'm going to purchase them um so that's an example of long tail keyword also EQ, eco friendly uh, com clothing companies in Herefordshire if I was to be focusing on just clothing I'm up against ASOS I'm up against er loads and loads of sites but if I was to type in uh, if I've included eco friendly uh, I've included Herefordshire I've included uh, clothing then it's more niche and I'm more likely to get the customers that are looking for that particular service so make sure you're targeting the right keywords um, yeah so I, I think harry you'll probably did you want to explain a little bit yeah. more i think we've got a graph that hannah's drawing yeah. as well yeah um yes definitely um i think well you put it quite well with the, the books analogy but one of the things we do with our clients is we um write up a, a large list of, of keywords that we we could track and then we try to uh, find like low-hanging fruit that that is keywords that they 
they're ranking reasonably for and then we nudge them up to like first or second position um and that way you are you know the the people that turn up on your site are very specific and targeted they are looking exactly for what what it is you're selling or offering um if you were if you were trying to um, sell a first edition hg wells um, time machine book and someone has found you just by typing books in the odds that they're interested in your specific book um, are very low um, but more so it would be impossible to to rank for books you know amazon have got that um, if you came to us as a client saying you want to be number one for books we'd say um, <laughs> um, we can't help you with that but if you wanted yeah. to rank number one for you know a, a type of book um, or a, you know a genre um, that's something we could work with you um, and that's how you should um, even if you're not working with an SEO company, that's what your approach should be. Look at the the long tail. That is less competitors, uh, more niche and more focused um, because it is pointless trying to um, become number one or two or three for these very general terms. You would need to throw a ridiculous amount of money at it and it would just be wasted really. Yeah. So just, just target, target um, your keywords. We've got an example actually um who I, I know a customer of ours that won't mind sharing it but with the industrial photography um harry yeah 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 That's, so um, um yeah dan um dan barker he is a, a client and uh, a, f a friend actually um and he you know he works in a very specific type of photography um years ago he he you know, did all kinds of photography, but he's he now does industrial and engineering photography. So he, as a business, he's he's quite targeted and niche, and that's allowed us to to help um, advise him on content. And I think he's ranking number one or two for um, industrial photography. So yeah. everyone searching for him, um, they they land on his site. It's his site is very uh, uniquely positioned to to fit that search term. So people. Um, are looking for his exact services um, so the conversion rate is really high but more so um, he's getting a lot of traffic um, if he tried to just get to number one for photography he'd be on you know page 100 somewhere mm -hmm. um, and even number one for you know midlands photography yeah. um, actually i think he ranks really high highly for herefordshire and ledbury and, and things like that but. i think it's important to just sing from the rooftops what you're mm -hmm. good at um dan's mm -hmm. really good at industrial photography and he is going to get inquiries talking about exactly what he's good at. Um, obviously, he's good at photography, but talking about that specific um, term that you can specialize in, I think that's really, really important. Just um, talk about that as much as you can. And what, think about what's most profitable, to, uh, profitable for your business. Uh, is that portrayed on your website? Um, you know, that is all we've got to look at. If we're not able, especially at the moment, if we're not able to meet you in person, you're not able to do the whole, you know, talking to us and we're not going to get that sales experience. We want your website to be telling, uh, telling the customers what you do and having the same experience they would as they would in person. Um, so which, um, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just looking at where I am. Uh, that's great. Yeah, so as I just said, uh, just consider which uh, parts of your business are most valuable to you and is that on your website and if it's not then it's definitely an area to look look at even look at different pages and um look at how what result do you want from that page do you want people to inquire do you want them to press on a certain link um and look if if you're a customer look at it with fresh eyes is that very easy to do um and are you likely to do that based on the information that you've been given. Uh, Google also is looking at that. Is there going to be, re it looks through the content. Is that going to be of use to um, Google's searchers? Um, they want to provide accurate uh, answers and results for the, mm. for the people searching. So definitely have a think about that. Um, next thing I'm going to go on to, I know we haven't got too long left, but if you don't mind just staying on for a little bit, we haven't got much more to go through and we will be here to answer questions. I know the FSB will be as well. Uh, so no, um, say no to Black Hat SEO. So Harry, I know you, um, you can yeah. explain about Black Hat SEO. Yeah, so um, Black Hat SEO is just a phrase really, which means uh, bad, bad SEO. And uh, when, when I started out doing SEO back in, back in the early 2000s, um there you know google wasn't as sophisticated as it is now and there were various tricks and techniques you could you could use to 
basically trick Google into gaining uh, a big rank. Um, and you would get lots and lots of um, untargeted traffic. I remember specifically um, when Pokemon was a, was the first time around when it was a when it was a craze, and everyone would put Pokemon nonsense on their web pages and at the bottom of the screen, um, white text on a white background, so you couldn't see it, but Google could see it. Mm. Um, so you know you'd invariably end up getting loads of people that were actually interested in, in Pokemon landing on your business page, just so not relevant at all. Mm. Um, and Google has since got a lot smarter now. I mean, it's so clever. It w- it'd be pointless trying to, to trick Google in that way. Um, but they are really strict. Um, if you if you do any any kind of black hat techniques, so like keyword stuffing. Um, so, for example, let's say let's say you were trying to sell um, HG Wells Time Machine books. That was your 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 thing. Um, if you you know had a whole page full of, of that keyword all over it. Um, Google's going to, going to know what you're trying to do there, and it will penalise you. You will you will lose rank massively. You might even become de-indexed. So basically, don't try to trick Google. Um, write content for people um, that you think is relevant for people. If you're going to target certain keywords, which you should after you've identified those long tail keywords, um, write loosely around them. Don't try to you know mathematically get your keyword density to such a a point which is what we were doing even even 10 years ago don't try to do that just write loosely around the topic and, and provide good content uh, and google will acknowledge that and, and rank you accordingly so yeah that was great um oh so yeah sorry i just saw a uh, message from michael uh so tools you can use we're going to send as i mentioned um some links in the email which hopefully will be able to help you uh with seo and comparing your uh, doing competitor analysis and things like that uh cert pro bot so cert pro bot is a great keyword tracking tool with free and paid accounts um and you can list all the keywords that you've come up with and it will see where you're ranking for those on Google, tell you how um, that's changing. Um, when you, bear in mind that when you first input the keywords, it does take a few days, um, I believe, for them to gather that data. Um, but yeah, it works by checking the rank of your cho- chosen keywords on Google, basically. And I will send you that, that link after. It's a really helpful tool, actually, SerpoBot. Um, Ahrefs, which I uh, Harry mentioned, and I will send you a link to that after. That's the backlink checker. It, it's really good, but the, the pro account is really expensive on that. Um, mm. We're actually developing a, a tool in-house um, that will provide a lot of those services um, um, at, at, a, at a free price. So... Um, but that's it's not due yet. Yeah. So Ahrefs at the moment, and then <laughs> we've got something in the pipeline. Uh, yeah. Hotjar. So Hotjar is really, really clever. Um, it's a remarkable tool that does a few things missing in Google Analytics. Uh, it, it enables you to uh, view heat maps. So basically, you can see everything that your user is doing on the web page. So what you might think they're doing might not be the case. So you might think they're going to go from the home page to a certain service back onto something you can see exactly where they're going uh, so it does actually video recordings uh, so you can watch what they're doing and heat maps see where they're spending the most time so they could be spending a lot of time on your inquiry page uh, but not actually make that inquiry so you're able to see what you can do uh, to improve that and get the conversion rate up uh, so that's hot jar I'll send you a link to that as well um, and yeah video interactions of your users um, and you can spot problems uh, and make improvements as well and then Google Analytics. If you haven't got an account, definitely, definitely worth getting one. Um, Analytics does all your stats for you. So standard standard tracking visitor levels and gives good overview of visitor data. Uh, it's other important data within uh, where to look. So it will tell you where your top pages are. So how many people are visiting uh, your pages? Is that in line with where you want it to go? Um, But yeah, Google Analytics will tell you all of the data statistics, how many inquiries or a goal conversion rate. Uh, So if, for example, you want people to inquire, that's your goal. Uh, It will be, you can track that, how many people are inquiring on that page. Um, So yeah, really, really important to do. And that's something that we include in our SEO reports for our clients um, but yeah I think that's the tools and um, we do just to let you know we do uh, provide our SEO services um, we do 
uh, provide monthly packages. So there's different packages and I'll be sending those through in an email as well. We've got our basic package, our advanced package and uh, the full SEO package. Um, and if you have any questions about those at all, um, then please do ask. But as I said, I will send you through more information uh, about that after. SEO's got really high return on investment rate. So that's really important, I think, you know, you get so much back from SEO um, for quite a low cost. So really important to bear in mind. And obviously today we haven't been able to cover absolutely everything, but hopefully you've got a little bit more information about what SEO is, what contributes to it. I hope it's been helpful. It's been a bit different doing it on this call because obviously we can't see you, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll be able to meet you in person <laughs> in the future. Um, we do host these workshops and we will be doing, running more advanced ones as well. Um, but we've got lots of services that we offer. We offer care packages for your website. Um, we obviously design and build websites. But if you want to ask us any questions at all, please ask now or email us. And my email is katie with an IE at voodoochili.com. Harry's is the same, Harry uh, with a Y. <laughs> I don't know if there's any <laughs> differentiations at voodoochili.com. Um, please drop us an email. Um, we'd be more than happy to hear from you and just let us know how you found today. Um, have you got any questions? And I know the FSB will be staying on after as well. And I want to say a massive thank you to Hannah. Hannah, that is amazing. I love that, what you've done. Don't know if she can hear. Oh yeah, She's there sharing. she is. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Hannah's called from Scribbling. Um, but yeah, so if, has anyone got any questions? I don't know if you can ask freely. Uh, if you just, just include, when you send the email through, Katie, will you just include Hannah's details as well? Is of course, a, yeah, that's yeah. That's Hannah, are you happy for that? 100%. <laughs> GDPR? Yeah, thank you, Lucas. <laughs> thank yep, you. GDPR compliant, that's fine. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you. I'll go back down one sec. <laughs> 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 I'll just finish off. Oh, yes, Richard. I think you can... Uh, can we unmute? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, I've got a question relating to this. It's, I mean, it's been absolutely amazing what you've set through. And if I had money right now, if I had any work, then I'd be back to you. Um, but what about social media links where people put their, you know, put their link on their Facebook page, whatever? Does that actually help the ranking on the... Shall uh... um, I answer this, Katie? Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah. I was... um, it, it helps traffic levels, so it does send people to, um, to your site, and I think it has a, a minor impact on, on SEO, but a lot of people confuse the two, SEO and social media, um, and it certainly doesn't you know, harm having you know, Facebook linking into your, to your site, um, and definitely you want you know, Google Maps and that kind of social media. Um, LinkedIn is really good, um, but we we find the best results are really uh, just content based off page content rather than rather than social media um but it definitely can play a part in any sort of lead generation strategy so yeah what it helps with tremendously as well is getting new pages that you've added to your website indexed quite quickly um so you can probably imagine stuff like facebook twitter and linkedin are constantly being searched by uh, google search engines and mm -hmm. other search engines so when you post a new link so say you've got a new product you might post it on online um it's it's more likely to get picked up if you post it on a social network than it is if you just leave it somewhere in your site so um it's got it's got its pros and cons um for the most part it's not going to give much validity or or sort of gusto uh to any particular page or or your site in general but it does help point stuff uh you know pointing links to to appropriate content and ultimately you know it's 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 a good thing to do uh, we see a lot of people a lot of our clients will post really cool stories or news or something um and then we'll have no link to their site and while that's not a direct seo faux pas it's like a pointless you know why did you make this amazing post if you're not going to link back to ultimately your sales channel which is your your yeah. own website yeah definitely any other questions from Hi, about Katie. Hi. Hi. Hi, Katie and Harry. Thank you very Hi. much for, okay. um, for today's um, session. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about websites because <laughs> we're, um, I work for an event bars company and um, our business has completely stopped now and right. actually looks as though it will stop until Easter of next year. Wow. Because there will be no outdoor events. So my question is really about the website and 
I don't really know what I can add to the website because we have no news. We can't, we can't show anything off. We can't advertise ourselves in a, in a way that we usually do. Mm. Um, so actually I'm possibly looking at going down, you know, looking back through our archives and saying, mm. this is what we used to do, but I'm quite conscious of that being quite boring for people as well. So I'm really, I just have no idea what I can yeah. say about us to kind of really engage with people again. Okay, I think Thomas has actually got a, um, an idea for this one. Yeah, so um, past case studies and testimonials from previous clients are sort of a great, easy to create content at this time. Everyone sat at home doing absolutely nothing for the most part. Um, so it's really easy to reach out to, to people you've worked with in the past. Like you say you were at an event strengths company uh, or whatever it was. Um, so you can say, you know, to, to successful clients that you've had in the past, maybe don't reach out to the ones that didn't end well. Um, just say, look, we're, we're trying to put together some content explaining you know, what challenges we faced in this project, what we had to do, what we had to bring to the event or whatever like that. Um, a real good sort of uh, take home um, from today's thing and something I'd recommend doing at this time, um, what Google really values and it's really easy content to produce is sort of explainer content around what it is you do. So for, for instance, um, we're going back to, to Dan Barker, the photographer earlier, he's a great industrial photographer, um, but a lot of people don't actually know what that is. Uh, a lot of people who need it won't necessarily know what it is and they might hear about it and they might hear, oh, it's sort of different than normal photography, what distinguishes it. So what he focused on was a page called What is Industrial Photography? And it sounds really stupid, right? No one is going to look for a page that says what is industrial photography and then immediately want industrial photography. But, but what it does is it allows Google to know that you are informed about a topic. Um, the terminology used throughout is very keyword focused. So loads of things are going to get picked up you know, industrial photography, engineering companies, all that sort of stuff. And ultimately what it is, is if you, if you look for Dan Barker's industrial photography sort of uh, pages uh, through Google, that's the one that comes up. So right now, you know, you might be an events drinks company, you might be a, a content writer, you might be uh, anyone really in the hospitality uh, industry. You can sort of write around, you know, what is this bit of our business what is this bit of our business here's stuff we did well yeah. in the past here's stuff we we did well and i was going to say actually one one thing which i can think of is you're probably some like you could do a blog on what cocktails to do how to make this cocktail even though it might seem silly but so many people might be searching for that at this time and it still keeps your business coming up and i think this time it's really important you'd probably agree thomas and harry that you know focus on content you won't always have this time um you'll be busy doing the events really have a look at what you've got out there and if it talks about your business as you would basically put yourself there whilst you can't be um sorry thomas is was there a, sorry i feel like i interrupted you there sorry yeah, no worries i'm just gonna pass over to uh to, to richard um richard yes richard i'm assuming uh you're gonna need to unmute there it seems that you're you're muted up at the moment i don't know if you can ah there you, there you go, go. Yeah. Hi, yeah, hi Helen. Yeah, one idea might be to actually run a virtual year whereby you use, you know, month by month, week by week, photos from last year and actually post it up. This is what we'd have been doing this weekend, but also include backlinks with the organisers you would have been with. Mm. And then, so like, they do the same back for you, perhaps, or something like that. And then, sort of, like, post the dates for next year's event. Uh, yeah, yeah if plans on that. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, that's really good. Thank you very much, guys. That's yeah, okay. you, you can um, you can also write around the sort of wider um, business, not not necessarily what you're doing, but things are uh, affecting um, your business generally. So, um, you know, if, if if it was us, and if we were we're in a very lucky position to be able to to keep working remotely, but if if we weren't, we'd be writing about what's happening in in the web design world, what's happening in SEO and technology. And all of these uh, things are very keyword rich. So it doesn't necessarily have to be about your business, but rather around what you do. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. There was an article in the, uh, in the Observer on Sunday written by Jay Rayner. And uh, he was talking about the, the restaurant business generally. Yep. Uh, so that, that might give you an idea. If you search for that article, it's just a, an idea of, one thing that you might write about, he was really talking about what, um, what it's like for those companies now, what the people are doing, uh, and also what will it be like when the return? Will it be different? Um, 
it's just a way of continuing a conversation with your audience, really. Um, it's a good article. Um, it's really focused on restaurants, but you can apply the same stuff to what you do. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. We've got any, any other uh, things, just a heads up, most of you are muted. So if you're currently shouting, trying to get a question thrown in, uh, we might not be able to hear you. Um, you can either unmute and, and give, us a, give us an audible uh, cue that you, you want to speak or maybe type in the, uh, type in the chat. So um, yeah, I've, I've got a question. Yeah, um, okay, Simon. Yeah, um, Harry, uh, Tom, how important is it to get all your keywords on a landing page? Um, yeah, you, I wouldn't get them all on there, really. But I mean, you, you, your homepage is typically um, like a high level summary of, it's kind of like its own index, really. Mm. That's how I look at it. Um, there is this um, habit a lot of people have of they want to get every, every single thing on that homepage. And sometimes, you know, we'll work with clients and we'll work out, we always work out the structure and the content with them at the start. And we spend quite quite a long time trying to reduce that down to, to the key points there um, because what you actually do is you split that content into pages and each of those pages um, has target keywords that you're, you're focusing on really your home page tends to be the highest ranked anyway mm -hmm. so if there are sub pages within it that rank really well for certain keywords um, that's going to also re reflect on your home page as well so oh, I, right. I wouldn't I wouldn't focus too much on it. Otherwise you'll end up with a, you know, a massive homepage. So. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Cheers guys. Thank you. No worries. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Ultimately a uh, homepage as well. It's really easy to make them really long. You know, the, uh, as a designer, it, 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 it pains me when a client wants a, a homepage that's like, you know, 12,000 pixels long, but in, in terms of SEO, it's actually, it can, can be detrimental um, because basically what you don't want. So say for instance, uh, us, for example, we do web design, we do SEO, uh, we do a whole range of services. Um, when you type in Hereford SEO or SEO for small businesses or SEO for me or you know whatever sort of things you're 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 trying to write about, um, it's actually not good for you to land on our landing our homepage. It's not ideal for us. What we want is for you to land on the page that's about SEO. Um, so if you stuff keywords into the homepage, Google sees that as the most important page on your site. So if there's thousands and thousands of words on that page, it means that pretty much any search term that you're aiming to get is going to end up on your homepage, which isn't ideal. Um, obviously, a brilliant website will have great navigation and people will stumble. You know, they can't help but get to the right page. But ultimately, if, you, if you're running a business with a lot of different services, you want to reference them, but really niche keyword specific terms um, you want to have within the appropriate page for that service so a lot of our SEO talk on the website is within the SEO page because we hope that when you type in SEO you land on that page um, so that would be one thing to avoid uh, you definitely want to mention all of the services you do um, on a home page and you want to link to those services uh, in theory the main menu at the top is all you need. So where it's got all the links, that's that's all the links in theory you'll need. Um, but we find that, that putting buttons or sections on your homepage that link to your services is far better um, for both conversion and getting the, those pages indexed. And yeah, it, it's a case of, you know, where do you want people to land on your page? N not only are you competing against competitors, you're competing within your own p pages um, on, on your site. So. Be careful where you use keyword specific content, but also, um, you know, make sure it's, it's, it's everywhere, but not everywhere, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs>